with this, I move on and take pleasure in inviting uh, our uh, distinguished panelists, uh, respected panelists for the technology session. Uh, may I invite uh, Mr. Manjunath, who is the Assistant Manager Technical Support from uh, SunGrow India. Mr. Mark Kinsley, President, CEO of Allion Energy. Uh, Mr. Chetan Shah, Director, uh, Goldie Green. Uh, Mr. Amit Mehta, Director, of Business Development uh, from uh, First Solar Power. Uh, Mr. Gaurav Gupta from uh, Nebitas. Mr. Satish Gupta, uh, CFO uh, from uh, Tata Power Solar. And uh, Mr. Rishi Agrawal, Zonal Head, Project and Structure Finance from uh, Aditya Birla Group. So the technology session will definitely give us lots of insights on what kind of numbers we can really expect these kind of technology solutions uh, to deliver to us and uh, later during the day we'll be talking more about rooftop distributed solar and then hitting the bullseye or the core subject of this conference on RE financing. So uh, it's my also pleasure to uh, request uh, Mr. Vivek uh, from Jinko to chair and moderate this session. Uh, so I think we start off with a presentation by Elia, right? Yeah. yeah. Good day, everyone. Um, um, real pleasure to be here again this year. And I was uh, quite enthused by this morning's presentations because a lot of the themes are coming together around, I think what Tanya said, a focus not on just power, but on kilowatt hours of power. And so I'm going to show a brief video uh, and really share our thinking on how we maximize the amount of energy you can generate. That's where we get our tagline, the most power from photovoltaics. It's more than just one piece of technology. So I'm going to talk to you about trackers and then automated cleaning. Okay. So the first thing we were trying to do is make it you able to develop projects where you need them and go up and down slopes. Uh, a way to look at our technology is a bunch of frustrated engineers trying to fix the frustrations and problems they had on previous developments. And so we developed a ballasted tracker system that avoids drilling, avoids geotech risk, lets you build where you want. And when the industry went to scale megawatt projects, they went to the highway department and looked at the guardrail for driven post. We went to the highway department as well and saw slip form extrusion, how you build rail and, you know, curb and gutter. And so it's a very efficient process for concrete uh, and uh, lets you put down up to two kilometers a shift per machine um, and put structure without having to worry about geotech underneath it. So no testing, no drill sets, no heavy equipment needed. Uh, the idea here is to speed construction and get better quality, especially on remote sites where you don't have skilled labor. So the way we reduce labor cost is we try to do as much pre-assembly as possible. Uh, we're partnering with Tata here in India uh, to localize much of the product. Um, and the point here is you measure that in how many man hours you do. Less man hours means better quality. So if you see where we had the concrete acting as a foundation, it's also helping with logistics. Uh, we wanted to get rid of all the laser leveling and precision measurements needed to build a tracker. So you see they're using the concrete track also as a way to actually uh, bring parts and move parts around the site. So imagine you're in a hot desert. You can build things at the end of the rail and move them in place. This also lets you do three shifts, so you don't have to light the entire site. When you do construction, you can construct at the end of a rail and then pull your parts into place. Again, the idea is the most efficient use of labor you can in what are often very harsh environments, hot temperature, deserts, uh, with uh, limited labor. So you see here, they're using no power tools, they're using just manual tools. We've tried to avoid as many torque uh, measurements and connections as possible. Uh, and uh, you'll see that this is also a system where you can use some of the newer technologies like Jinko demonstrated, uh, which are you know, bypass diodes, bifacial, dual glass, without needing extra structure. Uh, this system was designed for the desert and for bifacial. So you see the workers are now moving the, the uh, the table in place, and because we've separated the drivetrain, it's not a torque tube, it's more of a drive tube, we can change slope 5% every six dual glass modules uh, up to 15%, and we limit it to 15% because of site safety. If you have a flat site, you can just drop a pin into the drivetrain. 
Um, if you have a sloping site, you use a flexible coupling. Think about it like a universal joint on your car, just simpler. And instead of thousands of revolutions per minute, it's 365 revolutions per year. So it's a, it's a, you know, a simpler device. And again, the point here is to make it simple so you don't need skilled labor. Uh, one of the problems we had in Southern California, Mexico, and parts of the Mideast was the labor changes on the site every day. So we wanted to keep assembly processes very simple. So we also don't like subsurface guesswork. So we use a two-part thermosetting epoxy like you would use for earthquake remediation or for um, you know, uh, bridge bolts. And that way we know we have enough force to maintain the tracker in place and we're not worried about subsurface friction uh, or any quality we can't see. We also don't have subsurface corrosion because of that. So the goal again is no geotech surprises, use uneven terrain, not farmland, use concrete, it's a good local material, avoid any extra cost for the best modules and build long rows. Um, and the way we do that is a few ways. Uh, one, you're gonna see, uh, we, do, we can use regular modules, but as you've seen from many of the module people in presenting, uh, you know, the cost of dual glass has come down, and it is a better product for deserts. Uh, it has less, uh, you know, there's no hydrolytical stability attack on the back sheet. The product lasts longer, has better degradation. And the other point we were trying to do was deal with issues we'd found with previous tracker designs. This is the fifth tracker our team had designed. This is a, another uh, standard tracker design. And we saw issues as we got into large desert arrays with galloping behavior. The natural um, frequency of a long torque tube can be about 0.5 to 0.7 hertz. And the issue is on an open site, wind can come from many angles, it can come at many speeds, and you can match that resonant frequency and build up a, um, you know, a, a, a motion. And this is an example of a bridge, and if you look at it in cross-section, it looks like a torque tube tracker because the effects are very similar. You have vortex shedding happening and inducing the vibration. And it's not at high speed, that's at 10 meters per second. So we wanted to get a system that was designed so it could not transmit vibration. It's not a theoretical issue. Here's an example from the US of a relatively low wind speed driving a tracker. It has a um, damper on it, but the damper is not working at the end there. And so we said, let's design out of it with better mechanical engineering. And we do that by using a couple of gears. One gear you'll see in our system increases the stiffness. Um, and we also get rid of uh, the vibration because it damps. So you see that gear makes uh, the system much stiffer. Um, and as you'll see here, our engineer is shaking the system um, and it doesn't transmit up the row. So if you do that to a standard torque tube design, it will, the vibration will move up the entire row. You see it gets isolated to a single table. So that's a part of having a geared system and having it separate from the torque tube. The other thing we did is we said it's wasteful to have a bunch of metal holding a torque tube at high wind. So if we could convert a tracker into fixed tilt at high wind, that's a more efficient use of metal. So we stole the idea from a watch. It's a Geneva gear, which disengages your gear on a watch. And so what you're seeing, and you can see it outside on the sample we have, is basically it turns into a fixed tilt. So you basically go from torsional loads, driving on a drive tube, to radial loads down an A-frame, which is a much more efficient use of metal and materials. And because of that, we use about 30 tons of metric tons of steel per megawatt peak versus you know, 50, 60, 70 for other designs. Um, and then the final piece of this, of getting the most energy, is about proactive maintenance. This is a fixed tilt system, uh, but we'll also show you a tracker. It can do dry or wet. If you have inorganic or organic carbon, you need wet cleaning to get that off. Uh, you need both. Uh, and you just do a DOE around which is most efficient for your site. This is a fully, you don't have to bring any diesel to site. It's fully powered, lithium ion phosphate batteries. Um, and because we have a concrete rail, remember we used it for a foundation. We used it for logistics aid. And now the robot rides on it so it doesn't damage the cells in the panels. You do not want to put mass and keep massaging PV cells. You'll put micro cracks in them. So it's an efficient way to clean. You can also do visual inspection. And because we can carry heavy loads, it lets us do more than cleaning. Um, there's the tracker configuration. It does not go that fast. That's a <laughs> video speed up. But you can see we're looking, we can see a barcode. I can see the wire and cable. I'm spraying a coating on the junction box. Here we're carrying equipment to do inspection of the cells. Here's the next generation that does four megawatts per robot. And uh, you know, we just see it as a platform that can do more than only clean. Um, now we do like the trend towards dual glass and bifacial. Um, our math is not is a little more conservative. We think a single-axis tracks will give you about 20 percent. 
Um, and because we have an offset drive tube, it doesn't block the light to the back of the panel. And if you have nice uh, modules like Jinko with bypass diodes, uh, you can have flexible configurations for your bifacial. And then we think that maintaining the albedo is another way to ensure you get that boost. So we're using organic uh, agricultural lime here to actually increase the albedo of the site. Again, because the robot can carry fluids. So really those are our ideas, is build simpler and um, you know, use automation to get more energy out of your site. And that's how our thinking, I think, matches with a lot of the dialogue I heard this morning uh, from a number of people. Thank you. Hi. I would like to make two disclaimers. I'm not a technology person. I'm an accountant by qualification. And I will give a banker's perspective on rooftop solar. OK, we have not funded a single project till date on rooftop solar. And why the reasons? So probably it is guilt which may come out or something which we like to do. It will change the paradigm of renewable energy in the country. Out of 100 gigawatt, 40 gigawatt is envisaged from rooftop solar. If there is no financing happening from private sector, then it will not take off. You know the position public sector banks are in. So we have uh, more than 500 million exposure to renewable sectors as of now, out of which zero is to rooftop solar. Okay. You're not coming back. Okay. So basically, the grid connected uh, solar is the best solar form which can be done. Uh, your uh, you are connected to grid, any excess power you are supplying to grid, uh, there is no requirement of battery, etc. So the second option is off-grid. Off-grid system will probably mean that you need to have a battery. Battery costs have come down from uh, $1,000 per kilowatt to uh, now uh, 325 per kilowatt, and it will come down to 100 per kilowatt. Once Teslas of the world start manufacturing in mass and Chinese producers start copying, it will be $100 per kilowatt. So once that happens, off-grid will be a very viable option. Uh, it, is, it will be, the presentation will be shared with you all if you want. Uh, now the models in financing, what we are seeing and which are coming to us, one is, uh, that the company incurs himself, uh, the end user is incurring the capex. So that is okay, a AAA rated company or a good rated business house is doing, we are okay to fund it. Rather everybody will be okay to fund it. Uh, but the problem is happening, the best option from the country's point of view is that we have, why this is not, The other model, we have one of our sponsors as Clean Tech Solar, rooftop operational model where a renewable energy services company does the capex. The rooftop belongs to somebody else. Okay, just imagine how many rooftops are available in the country. If we have the solar panels installed there, which is lying idle. I live in Mumbai, my hometown is Mumbai. And uh, in a 30 story building, you are not allowed to go on the rooftop. So rooftop is idle. Okay. So you can utilize that space to put up. Now the problems happens. Uh, my legal friend Karan is also there from Luthra and Luthra. He defers that you can, he says you can have a soundproof contract. But contract is a piece of paper in India. Your government agencies don't own a contract. What about private agencies? If my housing society today enters into a contract, he cannot enter the premises. If the housing society does not want, he cannot enter the premises. Where you will go enforce the contract? So if the tomorrow, imagine a situation tomorrow the technology changes and the generation on a given space or a given panel per square kilometer generation multiplies. We are talking about 25 year contracts. Okay. 
Today, we may see efficiency coming in 10%, 12% on a yearly basis if the efficiency, cumulative efficiency is more than double. Why the same housing society will allow the old panels to be installed? Okay. Except contractual obligation. So, this is, these are the issues which as a lender, we are very reluctant to take a call. And the factor is compounded by the fact that your government agencies don't honor. So, they set a precedent. We used to learn in our NCRT books, Taha Praja Toha Raja. The top down approach hai. Raja says that I will not honor. Okay, most of the problem is happening in states where the central party and the state level parties are same. Okay, if you can't do that, where I wanted to meet Manu Srivastava, he has not come. We have stopped funding in some of these states, even PPA uh, renewal projects. That is, it gives a lot of discomfort. We were underwriting. Last year we have underwritten 4,000 crores of projects. This year zero. Solution is that the industry body either should go to the government says that boss, this business is not viable. Okay. There will be always green infra, senkops, etc. of the world which will get international financing. Okay, they will get international financing at 8%, 9%. But if you want to really develop the business, especially rooftop, you need mid-size small players who will go to nook and corners of the country and put up capacities, small, small capacities. This is retail business. A large player, for a large multinational player, it is very difficult to do retail business in India. So the target profile changes. Probably a Hindu, Hindustan liver customer can move to Patanjali, but not entirely. Okay. So we are dealing with different segment altogether. You have to go to small, small manufacturer, warehouse owners who have warehouse facilities. They're, they tried in Karnataka. We had sanctioned that facility and a mess up happened in Karnataka with a PPA with government. So uh, you can have your views. I'm just giving my views. Okay, probably not necessarily these are the views of my organization also, officially. But uh, since uh, we are informed people, uh, I'm giving my views why it gives discomfort to bankers. Okay, and why this is very critical. This is very critical for the country. Government themselves says that 40% of the additional addition in solar capacity needs to be from uh, rooftop solar. You are ready to give subsidy. You are ready to do everything on paper. There ha Sir, action ye hona chahiye that they, they should set up a body which says that, boss, this is the policy, renewable energy policy of the country, which is binding on all the state governments. If you do something, what happened in KERC did, there will be penal action. Kaha hai? Kaha implement kaha ho raha hai? Banks is le nahi paisa deta na ki aapka contract ki value nahi hai. It is a piece of paper. You have to go to court, right? Contract is valuable when the court gives an order. On the basis of contract, can you go to a government agency and say, they will not make available the grid, what is happening in Tamil Nadu? Right, bankers have lent against that PPA. What is the grid availability, sir? So, so, sir, solar panel without a PPA, okay, 
the the cost have come down from 15 crores per megawatt to 4 crores per megawatt there will be people who have spent 15 crores right for how many rupees they can sell those solar panels as bankers if the counterparty is not paying what we will do this is serious public money at one point from the other end they are recapitalizing the banks from other hand they are not paying how it will happen ab bataiye and and then and, and rooftop solar the other issue is that the access to site as a banker we don't know our lender our borrower is very honest very diligent he has post state of the art technology available at that point of time ha huh, government buildings are working quite good but you never know again what will happen okay they bid at 4 rupees other bid comes 2 and a half rupees they have a problem in signing pps of 4 rupees so tomorrow if the uh, the solar panels in, are installed with a efficiency of say 20 and the efficiency increases to 100 then they have a change of heart because we are lending 15 years money Yes, they are paying 15 rupees also, sir. But see, we work on 2% margin. If the NPA increases, even it's 5%, then recapitalization happens. So, so the August company we have, we are working in an industry, right? We are equal partners. Rather, equity in a solar or any renewable project does not exist, exceed 30 percent. And if we exclude EPC margin, it is less than 10 percent. Okay. So, aapka 10 rupiah laga hai, hamara 90 rupiah laga hai. So, we would be very conscious. We earn only fixed return. There will be always well spun in the world who will make multiple returns. We are concerned about that margin only. Right. We are taking a risk which is not commensurate with our returns. Okay. For a developer, maybe. But for us, but this is a sector we really want to work. I am discussing here because this sector needs to evolve and this will be trend setting for other sectors also. So what, what has happened abroad is there is differential pricing for differential period of the day. In 24 hours you will get differential pricing for differential hours because you have various means of generation of power in the day solar will generate you, if you have large capacities. You incentivize housewives to use their washing machines during the day to charge less rate, right? Because after all, renewable is an intermittent power. You need a standby thermal capacity. You have plants in Punjab, Talwandi, Sabu. I can name three thermal plants where, which are running large thermal plants at 40 rupees, 40 uh, percent PLF. Availability is 90 percent. Uh, state government is paying on time the uh, the uh, take on pay arrangement. Okay, it is at 75 percent PLF. They are paying the cost per unit is mo around seven rupees from those plants. So who? So you look at a th solar power plant uh, price of 2.5, but a thermal price increases to seven rupees because they are taking solar power and not taking thermal generated power. Who is bearing that cost? So solar has been cross subsidized by the thermal. Can you live without thermal? You tell me, sir. Till the time by storage solution, cheap storage solution is not found. Not possible. So you are incurring twice the cost. 
पाँच करोड़ रुपए थर्मल का अगर ईमानदारी से लगाया है फाइव करोड़ पर मेगावाट कॉस्ट है आई थिंक टाटाज है पोटेड मुंद्राइट फार लेसर कॉस्ट बट दैट इन्वॉल्व इंटरनेशनल फाइनेंसिंग एंड ई सी एज ऑन ऑल बैक ऑफ दी थम कैलकुलेशन फाइव करोड इज द मिनिमम कॉस्ट इफ यू पुट अप हेल्प प्लांट इट विल बी सिक्स सिक्स एंड हाफ रुपीज पर मेगा हाफ करोड़ रुपीज पर मेगावाट देन टॉप ऑफ इट फोर रू फोर एंड हाफ करोड ऑफ सोलर कॉस्ट so your as a industry body your point is also valid i am looking at the government policy and i am putting up yes i think uh, we are going wrong of about how to cover the solar leverage in africa i have seen there are uh, like grid is there already it is there demand is being met and there are people who are not electrified so in india also you can talk about many things and other things yes yes i don't think so that by adding so many things out of form Yes, 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 yes. I agree, sir. There are places where the grid avail grid itself is not present. So off-grid solution, but you require a battery storage. Yes, 